Hi there friends and welcome to my Xian Dao cultivation guide. I'm Icon and in this video I want to explain as much as I have learned about this form of cultivation in this game. So in case you are insecure about what Xian Dao cultivation is supposed to mean, that's basically all the basic laws that come across at the beginning of the game. There are two other cultivation forms in the game, the body cultivation and the Shen Dao cultivation, which are completely different to this one, but basically Xian Dao cultivation is exactly what you are doing when you start out with the game. So we're going to talk about Outer Disciples, Inner Disciples, Golden Cores, and what comes beyond that. So first up, most of these informations have been covered up in another video of mine about inner and outer disciple training. This video though is more towards the is more oriented towards the technical aspects and more about the cultivators themselves. So I only want to scrape a little bit about um, across the outer disciples a few informations there which are important to watch that topic and then we're going to get into the inner disciples and the golden core training. So let's get started shall we? So our outer disciples have all this wonderful body icon and if you click that yin yang icon you see here the foundation training. As soon as this thing here has hit 25,000 points they are eligible to be promoted into the status of inner disciple. Keep in mind inner disciples don't work on this schedule anymore. It's called an Outer Disciple work plan for a reason, and they will gather foundation points while they are training. You can also force the building of foundation by letting them eat different items, such like galls from animals or different herbs, medicines. Keep always an eye out an eye out for these tooltips on the items. Basically, all you need to know is depicted in there. So if you want to speed up this process there's plenty of food for that. Once people have made it this far they will look like this and then you can promote them. Um, there's a mod I use which um, depicts the law matching the match towards a law. We'll find that in the description below and when you choose a law always keep in mind that there's a percentage match that has to be fulfilled. This match only means how easy it will be to progress further. It doesn't really hinder you at all, but it does make it easier to progress here. So as we see here, my character here has an insanely high match towards that law. So let's get started with that. We choose one and then the outer disciple will receive an epiphany where they will turn into something better. So let's speed up. And now Nyan Yun is considered an inner disciple. And here you see it's a Jian Dao cultivation law. When you click here, you see the whole path. You can look up the inspiration tree. That's basically the skill tree of that law and the steps you need to take in that kind of cultivation. So every single law is a single path towards ascension and you can only follow one per lifetime far as things go so as soon as you are now an inner disciple a few things have changed so first up this woman now has a mental state this little globe here is her mental state once it drops too low she's going to grow unstable and unhappy which will be really bad for her cultivation we can keep that globe growing by selecting the mind training here. The other buttons here are practice, which will increase this foundation thingy here, and train, which will increase inspiration XP. Inspiration XP are needed to learn skills, increase your character skills, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's what they're all used for. Inspiration XP are, well, I would rather call them skill experience points. So once somebody is on the state of an inner disciple, a few things change. First up, they have new needs. They will no longer want to live with outer disciples. So make sure they have a room to be somewhere else. They will need an artifact and they will need better clothing. So these are things most of that can be prepared before you turn somebody into an inner disciple and it's really good to know that beforehand. An artifact can be created at the crafting table by just uh, going here, clicking the craft icon, clicking the artifact icon and then select an item to be turned into an artifact. 
every single item in this game can be turned into an artifact. But how to determine which artifact you want to use? So in Nyan Yun's example, the thing is, uh, the things are like this. She's a fire cultivator. So her artifact is ideally made from the earthen element. Why that? The artifact is, well, in, in this example, the artifact, let, let's consider the artifact as an own NPC, which draws its power from the disciple. And it can draw the most power from somebody with a fitting element. And since an earth element likes to draw power from fire, fire cultivators get earth element items and so on. That's why your artifacts are made out of an item, uh, out of a material which is powered by your cultivator. So that's that. Artifacts look then something like this. Let's go for some of one of my people here. Artifacts go into that slot. As you see here, I enchanted a lotus root and turned it into an artifact. Yes, that works. And that's going to negate that debuff. Artifacts have a lot of different stats. The most important stats are artifact power, chi recovery and capacity, and most likely attack speed too. So artifact power is just the flat out power of your artifact. Chi recovery is how fast it can recover its own chi because every artifact has its own chi pool, which is more or less their HP pool. And the chi capacity, well, recovery and capacity, speed of recovery and total capacity. So yeah, these are the most interesting stats when you craft artifacts. Keep in mind that the type of an item influences the stats on it. So if you want high artifact power, turn weapons into artifacts and so on. The game is quite complex when it comes down to that. So when uh, when we would create an artifact for Nyan Yun, we would all therefore create like to create an earth artifact. So I would tell Sean to craft an artifact out of that piece of brownstone. So you see here a certain success rate, a necessary amount of chi, and the mental state influencing that. So I'm sending him here. And artifact crafting is one of those character skills which can be increased by inspiration, which you can learn here. So you will need for Dao cultivation somebody who's good at artifact crafting because every Dao cultivator uses artifacts. And then it's all the matter of your law. Like some laws have a lot of artifact skills. You can see them like this. Then your character is supposed to learn more artifact mastery or your law is looking like this here of Nyan Yun's, which is pretty uh, pretty focused around spells, then you need spell casting, of course. And uh, here these stats, well, protection is pretty self-explanatory, alchemy is self-explanatory, formation, well, once you are able to do formations, this reflects your skill to form formations, but the most important stats here are artifact mastery if your law is an artifact law, spell casting if your law is a spell law, and protection for everybody, basically, to, to learn things, uh, to, to learn to defend yourself. Okay, so now that has been covered, but how does the cultivation itself work? You see here these crazy rooms like this, and this is a typical cultivation room. In the center lies a cushion. Usually you would use a chi cushion, but I don't have unlocked those yet. We only use those later on. When your sect is at 500 reputation, you can unlock chi cushions, and then you build something like that. What the heck does that mean, you might ask yourself. I will explain it to you. So in the center of this uh, construction sits the cultivator. The cushion itself will be later made out of the element of the cultivator, so he can bundle his energy positively here. And around here are items arranged which are affecting positive the chi positively of the cultivator. So since a metal cultivator is living here, we see here metal loves to receive energy from earth. So I have put down items with earthen qualities here. So it's stone essence as you see it with that little icon here. But the most important stat here is that the stone essence has the gather chi stat. What does that mean? It does gather 20 chi at a range of three. So the range is to be understood like this. Range of three means one starts at the cushion, two and three. 
So the stone essence's chi gathering skill, um, power emanates three tiles wide. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. As you see here, I have arranged them in a way that all this here is surrounded by these items. Why is that important? Cultivators love rooms which are brimful with chi. The more, the better. So these items don't not only gather chi on their own, but a cultivator also draws chi from his environment. So the more chi is available here, the better. And this here is a, another metal cultivator's room, and here I used wood items. But you might ask yourself why metal and wood are really not working well together. The thing here is the radius of elemental influence is always three tiles wide. So that means the elemental influence of the spirit wood is also three tiles wide. So we count down one, two, three. When my cultivator sits here, the wood power will not even reach his cushion. But that spirit wood is a chi gatherer with a range of four. So what happens when my guy sits here? He will gather the chi from the spirit wood, but not the wood elemental power. So there's even more chi in that room. So cultivation itself is quite simple. You select that uh, person and you go towards and you tell them to practice. Then they will go somewhere where they can practice, usually on their cushion. You need to assign that to them. And if they don't have a cushion, they will go on their bed and start cultivating there. This builds up this little foundation stuff here. And once that's filled, you can go for a breakthrough. So I have already prepared Wen Feng a little bit better for that purpose. So here I put up, I put her up to mind training because I want her to be as happy as possible. I'll explain in a second why. And now we wait until her status here is filled. So this here goes faster if the environment is positive. So the more chi, the more fitting the elements of the environment, the faster this here can climb. But that's not the only thing influencing it. So let's wait until this is all over and then we will have a look at the breakthroughs so now when feng has reached a breakthrough she's now eligible to go towards the next stage get the breakthrough thingy here so when you have the ability to break through you can always decide where and now you see here a success chance of 50 percent we see here all manner of things influencing that so you see here, I want to start out with location and chi density. So you see here, location element, five stars. That's because I have brim filled this place with earthen elements. Keep in mind that you can change with flooring, um, the elemental designation, with decorations, or also with the floor itself. And now, chi density, as you see here, it's not as good as it could be. It's only three stars. If we look down here, it's five stars. It's a perfect example how this does influence things. So next up is the XP window that reflects how often you have tried to do the breakthrough. The more often you try, the more successful you get. Mental state influences it negatively or positively since she's just stable, it's a neutral number. So we would be good um, if we would fill it up in 200. Then additional effects, that's if we had, uh, if we would have had some medicine or anything like that. Feng Shui of the sect does influence too, so try to keep that Feng Shui positive. There are certain weathers with the, which are either positive or negative. And then comes the yin yang. So it's pretty simple. Fire and wood are yang and are stronger during the day. Metal and water are yin and are stronger during the night. Earth is in a balanced state. That means fire and wood people want to do their breakthroughs during the daytimes. Metal and water people want to do their breakthroughs during the night times. Whereas earth people really like to do like to go for dusk and dawn times. Keep in mind though, the yin yang comes into effect only and really only when you finish your breakthrough. So the real nasty thing here is breakthroughs come in different spots. Uh, come in different times. Some breakthroughs need four hours, some need eight hours, some need 12 hours. You need to gather your own experience because you get, don't get any readout beforehand.
sorry to say that. So that's how all the breakthroughs work. Keep in mind, some breakthroughs risk, have the risk of wounds here. So you see, you should always read that text box here. It's always full with good information. Also, you see here the cost, chi, and lifespan. These are always different. So once you have gathered enough breakthroughs, you see here the stages. So first comes this, chi shaping, chi shaping, core shaping, core shaping, and then comes the golden core. All the breakthroughs work the same until you hit the golden core breakthrough. The golden core breakthrough is something special. So Sean already is at that stage. If you hit the golden core breakthrough, you will see that this whole thing here works a little bit different now. So first up we have, uh, let's see. You see here the success chances are cal calculated by different numbers than before. And also you don't get a percentage chance, you only get a estimated quality. What does that mean? The higher the quality, the bigger the power of your golden core. If you want to go for towards immortality, you need at least a golden core of quality three or higher. So how to get the quality of your golden core higher? So first up, you want, of course, to max out the outer things as good as possible. That's chi bonus, element bonus, mental state, yin yang, season. These things are just a matter of timing. Law, as you see here, is really negative. Why is that so? That's because his stats are not as fitting to the law, which is not that much of a problem because stats can be manipulated with items across the game easily. There are so many medicines that can manipulate um, your stats, that's really no problem. So what's not really depicted well here is there are two more things influencing your golden core quality massively. For one, that's maximum chi, and the other one, that's the chi sense. So first up, the more maximum chi, the higher your golden core is per se. But also, during the process of going into golden core, your cultivator sits down and seeps in chi constantly. And that's why chi sense is so friggin' important because chi sense is affecting a character's max, max chi per se. And everything you can do to increase the chi gain per second is also very powerful. So you want to increase chi sense, chi, max chi, and chi gain per second because chi sense directly influences max chi. So you can also improve the max chi amounts by eating all manner of different stuffs. So um, there's red ginseng improving that, there's ganoderma improving that, earth fluxes. There are so many things in the game, I can't even get started about that. But TLDR beneath that is a golden core is influenced by these stats here, max chi, chi regeneration, and chi sense, of course. These three things are vital. To do this as good as possible, I would strongly um, recommend you to transcribe all the laws you can get into the manual pavilions to make every single skill available for all the characters, and then you just go over here and study it. When you're studying out of a shelf, you get the you get a certain discount on that skill, on those skills. So here you see all the skills, that's all the Taiyi laws plus two. And if you are looking for it, you can also use the search button down here, input Qi, and then it gives you all the skills which are linked to Qi in one or another way. You can also put in a check mark here that you will only get those items you can learn. And this really boils it down to less than that. All right, so Jian Dao cultivation works pretty much like that. You work towards your breakthroughs. You want to have a room which is ideally aligned to the elements that you use. You want to have as many of those chi gatherers as possible around your break, around your um, cultivation spot. And yeah, that's the basics. What's really special about the Andao cultivation is their ability to learn their skills from, pav uh, from those manual pavilions, especially since you are able to learn every skill from every single freaking law that you are owning. 
So basically, Xiandao cultivators can pick up all the skills you have in your library and put it together on one character. That's really, really powerful, but takes quite long. And unlike, for example, body cultivators, you can't do that out of your own power. You have to actively strive for medicine pills, for knowledge. You have to actively work for that in comparison to these other laws. So here go a few tips and tricks before I leave you alone with the topic of the Andao uh, cultivation. I strongly recommend you to create at least one low quality golden core person before you try to get that one person which is really important to you towards their golden core state. It's perfectly fine to have a low grade golden core person in your sect out of two reasons. Reason one, a low grade golden core person can learn already all those golden core skills which are so beneficial for your whole sect. Reason two, rebirthing, reincarnating is a thing in this game. And it's more than normal in this world that somebody who had a weak start as a cultivator will just reincarnate into some other body. There are really good rituals for that. And then you get to restart all over again. And then these other peoples, which you have helped once, will then help that character to develop properly. So yeah, that's that. And manuals you learn here will be stored in the manual shelves and then you get to select who's going to do that. Another trick that's really worth mentioning is transcribing laws earns you a ton of inspiration XP. And there's right now a little bit of a bug. Well, it's an exploit. You have to decide yourself if you want to use it or not. So the thing works like this. If you study at a shelf when you just put all these skills in one bar, they don't grow costier, even though they should. Whenever you learn a skill, there's this attainment uh, level rising, which increases the costs of skills. Well, when you do it like that, it doesn't calculate the attainment in. It's all basically treated as if you had the same attainment level while you're learning. So basically you can cut a ton of inspiration XP by cheating it like that. I hope the devs will rule that out because it's not really that good, but yeah. I think now you should have learned all the necessary things to have an idea about Xiandao cultivation. So feel free to drop me comments down below if there are any questions open. If you feel like I really forgot something I should have mentioned there, drop it into the comments down below. I know that I haven't talked about formations and such things, but that's mainly because I feel like that's belonging into a different tutorial. We have to stop somewhere. So leave a like, leave a subscribe. I'd be deeply delighted if you could support this video or my channel. And apart from that, I hope you enjoyed your time and see you soon. Bye-bye, friends.